ladies and gentlemen, from New York City, Joe Garagiola. Thank you very much. And welcome to To Tell the Truth. Thank you, Bill Wendell. Hey, if, as the song says, the hills are alive today with the sound of music, our stage is alive today with the lady who was the inspiration for the great Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. And we're going to meet the Baroness Von Trapp right after we say hello to our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Here is Bill Cullen. Kitty Carlisle. Nipsey Russell. And Peggy Pat. Yes, sir, The Sound of Music. That was one of the great ones. I'll tell you, I really enjoyed that. Everybody, I'm sure, has seen that. Nipsey is with us. He gave us a thought yesterday. I'm not going to ask him for a thought. I'm going to tell him to think about it, and he'll spring one on us before this show is All over. Right. <laughs> Although, I tell you, I don't know how you can come up with him. You've been so busy as the co-star of The Wiz. Yeah. Yeah, a great yeah, movie, yeah. 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 Sir. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to meet the lady whose life was full of The Sound of Music. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Maria von Trapp. Number two. I am Maria von Trapp. Number three. My name is Maria von Trapp. Listen carefully now to the inspirational story of Maria von Trapp. I, Maria von Trapp, am the real life Maria in the popular musical and motion picture, The Sound of Music. As you may recall, at the time of Adolf Hitler, my husband, my children, and I fled our native Austria. As the Trapp family singers, we then travel the world singing the a cappella music of the 16th and 17th centuries, as well as the folk songs of different lands. After settling in Vermont, for years we conducted a summer music camp. Now our lodge is a Christmas visitor's paradise. A word concerning the two actresses who portrayed me. While I thought they were both excellent, I tried desperately, but unsuccessfully, to convince both Mary Martin and Julie Andrews not to make Maria so ladylike. Signed, Baroness Maria Von Trapp. We'll have some questions from our panel, and we'll have some answers from that side right after we watch these commercials. Well, our stage today is graced with three lovely ladies, all claiming to be the Baroness Maria von Trapp, the head of the Trapp family singers and the inspiration for Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical, The Sound of Music. And we're going to start this round with our own little songbird. Thank Kitty you. Carlisle. Well, whoever you are, I admire you enormously. You've done a wonderful job, and you've given us a lovely musical. Number one, uh, did Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, know you before they wrote Sound of Music? Yes. And number two, had you told them the story? Is that how it came about? Who wrote the book, by the way? Number two. Hi. Number two, who wrote the musical comedy book for uh, Sound of Music? Number two. Oh, hello. Uh, Maria, I did. Maria, Maria, number two. Yes. <laughs> who wrote the book? I did. No, number Maria. three, who wrote the book for the musical? Oh. Number three? It's so long ago, I forgot. You forgot. Uh, number three, why did you not want Mary Martin to be so ladylike? Were you not so ladylike? No, I wasn't. <laughs> Can you give me a for instance? What did you do once that was not ladylike, for instance? My steps were too long, and I'm talking with my hands. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm not ladylike. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, she's a funny lady for me. I love her. Nipsey. Uh, number three, does the word von in the uh, Austrian or German names have a specific meaning? It's a part of the aristocracy. The aristocracy. Yeah. I see. Uh, number one, about the music camps that you conducted, what did you do at those music camps? We uh, teach families. To sing? To sing music. Music. And I see. Uh, number like music together. Thank you. Number two, what, what language do you speak fluently? Well, usually in English, but yes. in other folk songs, we sing the songs in the country's language. I see. And number three, were you a, a sort of a to authoritate some of the things in the, in the movie? Did you talk, did, did they use you as a counselor for making the movie? Not in the movie. Then, uh, number one, how did you come to talk to Julie Andrews and uh, about how she should portray you? Uh, Mary Martin was in my home. I see. And 
Look at me. Two weeks. I see. Number uh, two, two uh, how did you construct the harmony that you sang in the little bit of piece that we uh, Could you repeat this, please? How did I? Construct the harmony. The harmony. Or was it done by ear? Or did you notate it on sheets of music? Or? Well, it, they were folk songs already put into certain types of music. The a cappella music is well known from the 16th and 17th century. I this see. was already done. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're really doing a number on you, boy. <laughs> number two, how many children do you have? Uh, ten children. Thank you. Uh, number three, did they all become singers? None. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, do they, what do they do now, your children? Oh, you mean every one of them? Well, no, 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 just as a... I mean, as some in business, like, just generally. Shush. Well, the oldest one is a doctor, and five are married, and three are not married. And they're all doing well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Bill Cullen. <laughs> I have a strange feeling that the real one is going to be identified by President Carter's Polish interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I know we're having communication difficulty here, number one. Did you, when you were traveling as the Trap Singers, ever sing any original music, any music that you had, your group had written? Uh, no, uh, different music from many nations. Was any, was any of the music in that musical that Richard Rogers wrote, was any of it, number one, staying with you for purposes of convenience, uh, was any of that music derived or did it come from some of the music you had done? No. <laughs> Number, number two, number two. You mentioned in here that you sang a cappella. What, what number two does a cappella mean? A cappella means that there is no instrumentation. It is all sung. There is no accompaniment like a piano or an organ or a guitar. Thank you. It is just a chorus. Thank you, number two. Okay, this time, ladies, you did great. You did great. All right, they must vote. No consultation, no changes. How about you? Do you think it's number one? Or do you think it is number two? Or do you think it is number three? All right, now we're gonna pay $50 for each incorrect vote, $500 if all the votes are wrong, and Kitty, you gotta start, how did you vote? Well, I think I know, and if you have to abide by the rules of the game, I think I know, I don't think we've met, but I think I know, and I'd like to say why I think it's the one I think it is okay. after you voted. All right, Nipsey. No. Nipsey, how'd you vote, Nipsey? Yeah, that's is Nick mein Sprachen. Mein Sprachen is Französisch. Aber the the uh, name and van is of the erste folk, so I say number three. You said number three. Right. All right, Peggy, how'd you vote? Well, I have to thank you for that wonderful German lesson. I should like to say that when number three said none of them, she was talking about her children. All right, number three, Bill Cullen. And when she said she wasn't ladylike merely because she took long steps and waved her arms, she convinced me. I too okay. voted for number three. Okay, everybody voted for number three. <laughs> and she's got her head in her hands. I'll tell you what, the votes are all, everybody's voted. Kitty, who did you think it was? I think it's number three, because I think that Madame von Trapp had enormous courage and very little patience with nonsense. And so it's <laughs> got to be number three. All right, so Kitty disqualified herself, but she also thought it was number three, which makes it unanimous. Let's ask the question. Will the real Baroness Maria von Trapp please stand up? <laughs> All right, let's find out who the imposters are now. Number one, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Valentina Krumpeter. I fly from uh, my native country, from Estonia. I go Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, and America. Moment, I've been physical therapist in Elizabeth Arden, New York Salon. Aha, uh -huh. okay. All right. <laughs> Number two, what is your name? What do you do? My real name is Gabriela Mane. I have spent 20 years in diplomatic life, seen quite a bit of the world, and now I study metaphysics. Aha, uh -huh. all right. <laughs> want to say something? Yes, 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 Baroness. I want to say they have much more of an accent than I. <laughs> Is it true that you turned your home in Vermont into a lodge? Is that right? Yes, it's right. 
-huh. And we are open all year round, and we are sold out for two years around Christmas. <laughs> around Christmas. Well, I'll tell you, during the rehearsal, she was something. She was instructing everybody, and we got to love her, and we're glad that you came by. Maybe we'll come by and see you for Christmas. Is that all right? Fine. Okay, thank you, Baroness Von Trapp, and our two lovely ladies for playing the television. Thank you all, ladies. Well, during the rehearsal, she was something. They, would, they wouldn't answer. They would go just blank, and she'd say, Say something, say something. She was producing the whole show. She's quite a lady. I tell you, we loved her. Hey, you know, there's an old Scottish prayer that goes like this. God deliver us from ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go boomp in the night. Well, I'll tell you what. Should you see anything that goes boomp in the night, you please call our next guest. And I'll explain right after our sponsors play a little show and tell now let's meet the founder of the International Ghost Registry. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Mark Turk. Number two. My name is Mark Turk. Number three. My name is Mark Turk. Okay, pay close heed to Mark Turk's ghost story. I'm Mark Turk, I'm the founder and director of the International Ghost Registry. Our function is to preserve records of ghost sightings and to scientifically investigate hauntings and ghostly phenomena throughout the world. There are two schools of thought on what a ghost actually is. The old traditional interpretation is that a ghost is the spirit of a dead person with unfinished business. The newer sophisticated view is that a ghost is like a psychic motion picture replayed over and over. I personally feel that both types of phenomena may exist which is why it is important to have a clearinghouse for all such manifestations, such as the International Ghost Registry. Signed, Mark Turk. <laughs> Get a wild thought of a sign on the lawn, all ghost register before haunting or something, <laughs> like a hotel. Hey, panel, before we start our questioning, though, I want to show you a photograph. Take a look at the monitor. It's a remarkable photograph. This photograph is of the famous tulip staircase at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, England. And when the negative was developed, the ghost was very apparent. The photograph is unretouched, has been thoroughly investigated. Now, with that further information, we're going to start our ghost hunt with the co-star of the new motion picture, The Wiz, the Tin Man himself, Nipsey Russell. Thank you. Number one, uh, in, in my childhood, I was often told stories about haunted houses. Are there places, uh, locations, or buildings in which ghosts are known to live or appear? Well, of course, uh, it's subject to some dispute, but uh, in fact, the federal government has put out such a directory just recently. I see. Now, number three, uh, can these uh, apparitions be explained the way they explain the UFOs as uh, swamp gases or things that uh, have other essences? I don't believe so. There are too many cases where the same apparition has been seen in the same place by more than one person uh, independently yeah. and described in exactly the same way, and I think that rules out... Uh, no, the kind I of see. Thing Thank about. you. Uh, number two, uh, can one pre be predisposed to see a ghost? Can you go expecting to see a ghost and let it really be one of your own hallucinations? No, we found that it's fairly innate. People are psychic by nature, and some people are better able to perceive ghosts than others. I see. Uh, Let's go to Peggy. Thank you. Number three, your theory is then, then that a ghost is kind of a rerun, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, the second theory, the idea of the psychic imprint. That's There's a also... terrible thought for somebody on TV. Even after you die, you're going to be on reruns. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, number one, who's the main ghost at Hampton Court? Uh, well, Cardinal uh, Schulting at one point. Thank you. Number two, which country has the most ghosts? Norway has the most ghosts, and it's been ascribed to the high altitude and the fact that it's isolated, and it's about four times the average of any other country. Wow. Number, number three, who's the funniest ghost that you have recorded? The funniest ghost. Uh, Could it be a laugher in every crowd? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of any funny ghosts right now. Oh, number one, who animals? Let's, Casper the ghost on Disney makes me laugh. Uh, Bill Cullen. Number three, the psychic motion picture that you talked about. Is that the person, psych, who is seeing the ghost or the person who the ghost used to be, psych? The idea is that certain events, uh, because of the emotionality involved, may imprint themselves in the atmosphere or surrounding landscape. And then when the person uh, that sees the ghost comes, he picks that information up and sees it much like seeing a motion picture film. Oh, okay. Number two, that, mo that uh, photograph we saw showed a ghost that was not visible to the naked eye when the photograph was taken, correct? That's correct. 
Was that a special kind of film number too? Was it infrared or anything like no, that? No, matter of fact, after the film was taken, it was taken to Kodak, and they gave expert opinions, certifying sworn affidavits, that that photo was not retouched, there was no double exposure, and that it was genuine to, in their expert opinion. Number one. <laughs> Well, let's go to Kitty. Well, number one, I'd like to know, could I buy your registry and then have a ghost tour? Could I go to some places in Norway and some places? I've never seen a ghost, but I'd like to go some and see one, and I'd be willing to go, like, uh, on, a, on, a, on a safari just to see ghosts. Well, uh, we don't offer that service yet, but uh, you probably would have to uh, contact somebody locally in the field. I don't think there's any coordinating oh, agency. Oh, well, number two, number one said the federal government has a registry. Well, the federal government is going to the ghost business? No, the registry is part of a larger Local publication which yeah. includes places of interest for people to visit in different localities throughout uh -huh. the states. I see, but they do list ghosts. They do, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, the, this ghost we saw on the Tulip Staircase, was this somebody that nobody expected or was this part of the legend? Uh, there was no previous legend. No one had thought of any ghosts. When oh, it was taken, it was taken as a tourist snapshot. The ghost was an extra. <laughs> ah, well, number one, why does the altitude in Norway make you more susceptible to seeing ghosts? Number two. Number two, yes. Uh, quite frankly, we haven't figured it out. We've just begun to compile all of these statistics, and that was the purpose of our organization. And we don't know why it has, it's helpful to be there. No I theories. Think. Oh, yeah. That means that our game is over, and now it is time to vote. They're going to mark their ballot. Do you think it's number one? Or do you think it is number two? Or do you think it is number three? All right. Ballots are all marked there. Nipsey, how'd you vote? I have never seen a ghost, an ogre, or an elf. They say that spirits cannot hurt you, but they can make you hurt yourself. I vote for number three. <laughs> number three, all right. Peggy. Well, the ghost at Hampton Court that talks a lot is Catherine Howard, so I didn't vote for number one. I don't know why I didn't vote for number two. Number, there's something number three. I, I just think it's number three. I think it's number three, all right. Bill Cullen. Well, number three did very good, but I don't know. I have a thing about number two. Whenever I dream or have an apparition or anything like that, it's always number two. So, <laughs> I think I'll vote for number two. All right, number two. Kitty, how'd you vote? I voted for number three. I thought his explanation about the psychic motion picture was extremely well done, and I thought probably he'd given it before. Okay, the votes are all in. Will the real Mark Turk please stand up? They got him. Yeah, they got him. All right, let's find out now about the imposter. Number one, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Derek Schuster. I'm director of the Learning for Living Institute, a nonprofit adult education organization. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number two, what is your name and what do you do? I'm Jerry Lesney. I'm a trial attorney in New York City, and I hope I'm as successful with my juries as I was with Bill Cullen. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you are, too. Mark, let me ask you, have you ever registered a ghost, you personally? Uh, one that I've seen myself. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I did. Uh, I, I should say I have uh, registered a ghost in which I saw a spirit manifestation at the Whaley House in San Diego. I saw a rather large chain swing back and forth right after I mentally thought, if there's a ghost present, I would like it to do something. Uh -huh. uh, that's the only thing that I've seen that I think is verifiable. I've seen th other things, but I think it could be hallucination. Where, where could Kitty go, uh, her best chance to see a ghost in this country? What state? Uh, well, in this country, I would say this, uh, the South or New England. Outside of the country, I would say uh, England or Scotland. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. We enjoyed you uh, playing our game to tell the truth. And thank you, our two imposters. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, we're going to leave right now because we have to register a ghost. I think I saw one. So long, everybody. In addition to the cash awards, our first team of challenges will receive fashion jewelry from Sarah Coventry, who has jewelry for every occasion. See the jewelry with fashion know-how at a Sarah Coventry home fashion show. Our second team will receive Turtle Wax, world's largest selling liquid power wax, cleans, polishes, protects, and one easy operation. Turtle Wax with a hard shell finish.